it is Graham here living the dream of 2020 at the gorgeous Sandals Grand St. Lucian. There are always a lot of questions on the Sandals Grand St. Lucian Facebook fan page asking questions about the commute or the transfer from the International Airport in the south of the island to the Sandals Grand St. Lucian here in the north of the island or in Rodney Bay which is behind me. So in this episode I want to take you on the journey that we made during October 2020 from Huonora International Airport in the south of the island through the rainforest and the twisty road taking about 90 minutes an hour and a half it's not a great journey after coming off an 8 hour 40 minute flight from London but it's certainly worth documenting Before I get into this transfer report between the Hunora International Airport and the Sandals Grand St. Lucian, I want to set some context. According to Google Maps, the distance between the two locations is only 43 miles, but the road between them isn't great. Of course, a helicopter transfer costing more than $200 each will only take you to the small airport or the domestic airport at the capital city of Castries, and you'll still have to do the last half hour or last 40 minutes depending on traffic transfer from the Castries airport to Sandals Grand St Lucian by road and don't forget your bags are going to have to do the 90 minute or the two hour journey from the international airport at Huonora up to Sandals Grand St Lucian so no matter which way you're going to do it guys it's not a great transfer and it is certainly the Achilles heel of Sandals after coming off a long haul flight. So let's get into this trip report or is it a transfer report? I have got no idea but you join Fiona and I as we leave the dedicated Sandals Lounge at St Lucia's Huonora International Airport heading for the bus that would take us to the Sandals Grand. Remember guys that there are three Sandals resorts on St Lucia. The first one is La Toc, the second one is the Halcyon and of course we're heading to the Grand. Of course I had called shotgun as I do every time I get into one of these Sandals minivans heading to the resort so that I can film it and bring all of this exciting content to you guys here on YouTube. Remember that it is October 2020, we're still in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic and there were only four of us plus the driver in this minivan heading on the most exciting journey you're ever going to see on YouTube. I'm talking about exciting trip reports here on YouTube. My biggest challenge on this one was to try and show you something interesting in what is a pretty dull two hours that you're never going to get back in your life after doing this journey except that you're going to have to do it again on the return to the airport after a fantastic fun-filled holiday at Sandals. That is of course unless you're absolutely loaded and you've decided to do the helicopter transport which will take you probably less than 15 minutes and give you a much nicer view of the island than this pretty horrendous road. So I'm going to try and inject what I would loosely describe as humour into a video that would otherwise be pretty boring like the journey or the transfer between the airport and the Grand. So let's start with Americans and therefore if you are an American with a nervous disposition my advice before taking this journey between the airport and the Grand is to drink plenty of vodka on your flight down to St Lucia because like the majority of the British colonial Caribbean you're going to be driving on the correct side of the road and of course the correct side of the road means the left side of the road just like here in the United Kingdom. And of course St Lucia and it's now 165,000 population got their independence from the United Kingdom on the 22nd of February 1979. So I guess St Lucia has had a lot less time than the United States to convert to driving on the right which is of course the wrong side of the road. Reaching the Atlantic coast, fishing town of Denere and its near 13,000 population means we've reached a halfway point in the journey between Huonora International Airport and the capital city of Castries. In the next part of this drive we're going to be climbing into the hills and that means the rainforest of St Lucia. One thing to remember guys that most of the islands in the Caribbean, St Lucia is volcanic and volcanic land is some of the most fertile on the planet and therefore you'll not be surprised to learn that bananas are the second largest export from the island of St Lucia totaling just over eight million dollars worth every year. For those of you interested in the other largest exports from the island of St Lucia each year, petroleum tops it 
at 18 million US dollars per year. As I said earlier, bananas came second at just over 8 million US dollars a year. Beer, funny enough, comes third at just over $4 million a year and I wish they would export some peat on to the United Kingdom. Refined petroleum came fourth and broadcasting accessories, yeah I have no idea what that means, but that came fifth at just over 3.65 million US dollars of exports every year. But despite all of these exports, the largest industry on the island St Lucia is of course tourism, accounting for 65% of the island's GDP every year. And as you can see, Precious little of that income ever reaches St Lucia's road network. Anyway, back to our exciting transfer between the airport and the Sandals Grand St Lucia. You're going to come across, or should I say, you're going to drive through many small villages on your journey between the airport and Castries, the capital city of St Lucia. case you're asking yourselves the question, what is the death rate on St Lucia's roads every year? Well according to the World Health Organization in 2018 there were 27 deaths on the St Lucian roads, especially when you consider that in the same period in the United Kingdom 1770 people lost their lives to the road, but that just pales into utter insignificance when in the same period in the United States over 38,000 people lost their lives on US roads. I don't know what that says about US drivers, but even at a population five times the size of the UK, 38,000 seems pretty horrendous. But then, you know, it is the US and it could be fake news. Who knows? Anyway, back to St Lucia and we're approaching the south side of the capital city of Castries, covering an area of 31 square miles with a population of 70,000. And at the top of the hill, just to the right of this road, is the brand new Castries Victoria Hospital, which I hope has a world-beating orthopaedic surgery department after driving the St Lucian roads, because let me tell you, after you've gone through all of the potholes between the airport and the Sandals Grand, you're going to need back surgery. Exiting the tunnels on the outskirts of Castries, we're now heading down the hill into Castries itself. And the first roundabout we come to, or the turning circle as the Americans like to call them, but I'm afraid to us British they'll always be roundabouts, you actually will be coming to the first Sandals Resort, and that is of course the Regency La Talk. On three out of our four last visits to the Sandals Grand St Lucian between 2013 and 2016, Fuel and I have visited La Talk to go to kimonos the Hapachi restaurant. However, by our last visit to the Sandals Grand St Lucian in 2016, they had got a kimonos, so we had absolutely no reason to head over to La Talk at all. It is worth pointing out that when we visited St Lucia here in October 2020, the Sandals Regency La Talk was open along with the Grand. However, the Halcyon, which we'll be passing shortly, was still closed, and we believe would remain closed until January 21. And of course, during normal years, and I mean non COVID years, travel between the Sandals Resort was always possible via the free minibus transfer service. But in October 
2020, while you could travel between La Toc and the Grand, sandals were certainly not encouraging it on safety grounds due to the coronavirus. Anyway, back to our journey, which was certainly now getting exciting because we were not only getting close to the Sandals Grand St. Lucian, but we were also now travelling through the centre of Castries, the capital city of St. Lucia. <music> As we approach the next junction, where we'll be turning left, on our left is the first of two markets you will find in Castries. And as we turn left at the junction, if you look to the right, you will see the second market here in Castries. Or maybe the second one is the first one and the first one's the second one. I've got absolutely no idea, guys, other than there are two markets in Castries just across the road from each other. But during our first visit to the Sandals Grand St. Lucian in 2013, Fiona and I visited both of these markets. But guys, there's no point in me telling you if they're any good or not, because shopping for me means one place, and that of course is Amazon.co.uk. I've got no idea. They were markets in the Caribbean. They're probably as good as any market in the Caribbean. Anyway, back to our rainy drive on Tuesday the 6th of October 2020, and to our left is the Castries Cruise Liner Port, which locals tell me is the deepest and largest cruise liner port in the Caribbean, and can hold up to four cruise liners simultaneously, which probably doubles the population of Castries and probably increasing the old age pensioner population a hundredfold. Fiona and I have been in Castries when at least one of these cruise liners in and being knocked over by Zimmer frames and mobility scooters is all the rage when cruise liners are in town. And that's why we go to Sandals. the coronavirus has all but killed the cruise liner business so the only ship in Castries Harbour today was this pretty impressive luxury motor yacht. And as we come to the next junction, we arrive at the runway at the Castries Domestic Airport. If you travel by helicopter from Hunora Airport to the Sandals Grand St Lucia, this is where they drop you off. This is also where local inter-island flights arrive and depart from. However, with the demise of late airlines earlier this year, another casualty to the coronavirus, you're going to see very few flights coming in and out of this domestic airport at Castries. But just think, guys, if you'd taken the helicopter transfer, you would have missed this exciting journey through the metropolis of Castries, never mind the rainforests of St Lucia. You're going to learn very quickly that the last six or seven miles of this transfer between Castries and Rodney Bay will be some of the slowest of your journey. The next couple of miles turns into dual carriageway, but I'm talking no motorway here, no freeway. It is only a couple of miles of dual carriageway, which does give you a slightly faster journey, but that does end to single track road again as you approach Rodney Bay and the traffic, guys, is absolutely horrendous. So just bear this in mind if you take the helicopter transfer because it only gets you to the little airport at Castries and you're still going to have this part of the journey to complete by road. And if you look carefully on the left, you're going to see the Sandals Halcyon, which as I said earlier, is still closed and probably won't open until January 2021 at the earliest. And 
And that's it guys, you've now seen the sum total of the St Lucian motorway network. We're now on one of the slowest parts of the journey, and that's the stretch to Rodney Bay. And on our left, we're approaching the Rodney Bay Outlet Mall. And Fiona and I visited this mall on every single one of our trips to the Sandals Grand St Lucian from 2013 through to 2016. During normal times if you visit this mall, don't forget to take your passport and details of your flight departure from St Lucia, because both will get you duty free or tax free on nearly all your shopping. And of course the reason I say normal times because during our stay at the Sandals Grand St Lucian during October 2020 we were not allowed to leave the resort. However that can change any time as coronavirus restrictions are lifted. Anyway back to the Rodney Bay Mall. Despite a number of stores closing between when we first visited in 2013 and when we last visited in 2016 there were still stores like American Polo, Colombian Emeralds, Bose and of course my guilty pleasure KFC. And shortly after passing the Rodney Bay Mall, we arrive at the Rodney Bay Marina. And from what I've been told, the Rodney Bay Marina was built in 1972, and in fact all of the rocks and stones that were removed building this marina were used to build the causeway that connects St Lucia with Pigeon Island. And yes guys, that's the same causeway that Sandals Grand St Lucian is built on. And here we are finally approaching the junction where we'll be turning left onto said causeway. And this guys is where we're approaching the end of the journey. And if you're stuck with this video so far, I'm not sure if I'm impressed, delighted or even feeling very sad, but I will give you the details of a good psychologist in the show notes below. And for those of you who are wondering, the resort on our left is the Landings Resort and Spa. And the rock in front of you that you will soon see in the Atlantic Ocean is known locally as Shit Rock. And if you venture out there on one of the many Sandals cruises, you'll find out why. But that's it guys, we'll soon be turning left into Sandals Grand St Lucian. And looking at the time strip in my Filmora 9 editing suite, I can't believe it myself, I managed to do this in less than 20 minutes, my target. The next two videos I plan to edit will be my ever popular resort and room tours this year at the Sandals Grand St Lucian. So you know what to do if you want to continue following Fiona and I as we enjoy our Sandals St Lucian vacation during October 2020. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Our resort and room tour from the Sandals Grand Antigua last year has reached over 2,000 views already at the time of editing this video in late October 2020. And of course, the resort and room tour from Sandals Grenada from 2018 has reached over 6,000 views. As we clear security and our taxi driver is registered with his temperature taken, we're on the final stretch into the drive at the Sandals Grand St Lucian. I know that it's hard to appreciate from the 18 minutes on this video. It's not a great journey guys and it was made worse this year by the air conditioning having to be turned off to comply with COVID-19 rules. And as you can see the day we did this journey it was dull, it was wet but it was still quite warm at around 20 9 degrees. That's 88 degrees in American money. However I can assure you and you will see it from the videos following this one that the pain and hassle you go through to get to this fantastic resort is absolutely 100% worth it. I really do mean it folks if you're stuck with me this far thank you so much for watching.